değerli konuklar, konuşmasını yapmak üzere Uluslararası Muhasebeciler Federasyonu Genel Başkanı Sayın Alan Johnson'ı kürsüye davet ediyoruz. Dear President, the stage is yours. Good morning, everyone. Mahaba. It's really great to be back in this fantastic city. And first of all, I'd like to thank the mayor, who has left because he's a very busy man, for the great work he is doing in this fantastic world city. Um, I'd like to also thank uh, Mr. Nakir Farid Yadda, who is the president of the Revenue Administration, Dr. Hassan Otsali, President of the Public Oversight Board. Of course, uh, my colleague, Mr. Emre Kadiloglu, who, who is the President of Termob, and uh, Mr. Jan Arikan, who is the Secretary General of Termob. Um, I'd like to thank all of the Termob leadership, members of the boards, and of course, all the Termob members present here today. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it is really an honor to be here. Um, as the global voice of the profession, IFAC has 180 members representing more than 3 million professional accountants from over 135 countries across the world. And you know, our role is simply to speak out as a global voice of the profession, to speak out as your voice across the world, to lead and develop a future-ready profession and to support the development, the adoption and the implementation of high-quality, world-class international standards. So I'd like to congratulate Termov and your president and all of the members for hosting this very timely conference. Termov has been an IPAC member for nearly 30 years and it has of course served Turkey for even longer. Over the decades, you have been and remain a pillar of prosperity in Turkey and a very important part of the global profession. Thank you for your hard work and great accomplishments in the service of the public interest. I would also like to take the opportunity to recognize the immense contributions from Termal volunteers to the IFAC board and to the independent standard setting boards and other committees. First of all, let me start uh, by saying hello to a former board colleague of mine, Dr. Musum Tuku, who I see sitting here, who is your former president and a former member of the IFAC board. And in fact, in my first year on the board of IFAC in 2016, Musum was a fantastic colleague to me and helped me understand what the role of an IFAC board member was. So thank you very much. I'd also like to recognize Aisha Ariak, who I see sitting somewhere over there, who is a current colleague of mine on the IFAC board. And let me say with a lot of pride that Aisha is one of 13 female members on the IFAC board. And in fact, this is the third year that IFAC has had a majority female membership. 13 out of 23 members of the board are females from all over the world. And it is a source of pleasure that we have been able to achieve this. I can tell you it makes a real difference to what we do and how we do what we do. And I'm delighted that Aisha has been a great colleague of mine over the last past three years into her fourth year. I would also like to recognize Mr. Ibrahim Kagla, who has been a member, who is a member of the IFAC Professional Accountants and Business Committee. And indeed, only just this morning, I met uh, Professor Cemal Gibis, who was on the SMP Committee, he told me, for seven years. Um, so I'd like to thank him as well for the great contribution to our profession. Now, your Congress agenda is a very impressive agenda. And you have brought together excellent speakers from across the world, but importantly, from within your great country. 
It is therefore an honor and a pleasure to join you today to say a few words from an IFAC perspective about the urgent efforts needed to embrace sustainability and uphold the public interest amid the digital transformation. So let me say thank you for inviting me to Istanbul. It's really great to be back here after a number of years. Today I'd like to focus just on five themes. Sustainability, obviously, as it's been talked about already by all of the speakers who came before me. Digitalization, public financial management, fighting corruption and related crimes, and supporting small and medium-sized enterprises. So first, I'll start with sustainability. And of course, you know, it's, uh, you know it's, it's often difficult to describe what we mean by sustainability, but um, I must say Shahid did a very good job earlier this morning describing it for us, because it's open to much interpretation as we would expect. To some, it primarily evokes environmental protection and climate action, which clearly is part of it. It all is also taken to mean green finance, or other foundations, in my view, equally important, of equitable, inclusive, and lasting economic growth that benefits all. Some think of it as just about good corporate governance, good governance both in the corporate sector and in the public sector. Of course, we have to accept that no understanding of sustainability would be complete without bringing into the conversation the three ESG factors of environmental, social, and governance, which have already been referred to this morning. In fact, I was very impressed that your mayor was able to speak our language, the language of our profession. So whoever wrote his speech, congratulations. He did a great job. Now, the UN SDG Agenda for 2013 for Sustainable Development um, is a very eloquent aspect of what matters to us in society because it says the SDGs, and I will quote, are integrated and indivisible and balance the three dimensions of sustainable development, which is the economic development, social development, and of course, protecting the environment. The bottom line is that future prosperity in the public interest in Turkey and across the world depend on how effectively public and private organizations can adopt and integrate ESG factors into their planning, into their strategies, into their processes, into their operations, and of course, in their disclosures to society so they can be held accountable for what they do. And as accountants, we're well placed, we're well prepared with our deep insights into value creation in the public and private sectors to champion this cause and lead the practical efforts that will be required across all organizations. Now, IFAC have championed and campaigned vigorously amongst all of our stakeholders and partners for the new International Sustainable Standards Board, or IWSB. Its establishment in November 2021 at COP26, which was referred to earlier, was an important step towards an effective global response to the climate crisis. But country level adoption and implementation is key. The profession in every country must keep engaging with public authorities to pursue the IWSB's Global Baseline Sustainability Standards Disclosures, or SDSs. Sustainability disclosures will feature very prominently um, in this Congress, and of course, as was mentioned earlier, at the World Congress of Accountants being held in Mumbai in November this year. And it's very important that Turkey, and I was just pleased to hear a speaker just before me who was referring to what needs to be done in Turkey, and it sounds like you've got an excellent agenda ahead of you. Now, but let's not forget that seven years have passed since COP in Paris. 
with unfortunately, and we must be brutally honest, not nearly enough to show for the commitments that were made in Paris. Now, we just have seven years to go to 2013, so there's no room for error or complacency because we must achieve the global emission targets that we've all signed up for. As we look around the world today, everywhere, look at what's happening in Pakistan. In Italy, a few weeks ago, a significant flooded. The fires right across Europe this summer, temperatures exceeding 40 degrees. People's livelihoods being destroyed right across the world. No one, anywhere, can doubt any longer that we have a crisis that needs to be addressed very, very quickly. And we are running out of time. So I'm pleased to see that sustainability features so strongly on your agenda over the next two days. Our profession must play a full part to create a more inclusive, equitable and sustainable world for all. Our role relates to the resilience of society as a whole, through sustainable value creation, greater trust and fairness in institutions, a healthy natural environment and economic revival. We need to innovate, we need to advise, and we need to lead, lead as professional accountants wherever and whenever we can. My second theme, digitalization. Of course, all of our work towards sustainability from 2030 and beyond will be shaped by technology. Digitalization is here and more is coming because daily life increasingly means a digital life and business increasingly means a digital business. In the long term, digitalization will bring about greater use of automated digital tools, as Shahid has mentioned, data analytics and artificial intelligence. And decentralization of access to technology has already disrupted huge industries. What we are seeing is democratization of access to increasingly advanced and interconnected technologies. And the accountants of the digital present and future will need to perform new roles, often with advice and responsibilities, as Shahid mentioned, with a trusted advisor rather than exclusively the technical ones that we have developed over decades. And the accountancy profession must become more multidisciplinary as the contributions of non-traditional contributors, such as computer scientists, become essential to our daily work. This is an opportunity as these developments will create a need for trusted advisors with wider skill sets, and most importantly, in my view, the integrity of professional ethics of an accountant. Because wherever economic growth is sustainable, these qualities that we have will be valued enormously. I just come on quickly to the third thing, which is public financial management. The importance of this can be seen in the many overlapping crises. COVID, inflation, disrupted supply chains, the few shortages gripping the world, and of course, climate. And all the people are looking to, for their governments to respond to their current and future needs. This will mean effective plans that account for the full scope of those needs and responds to them with sustainable, equitable, and inclusive policies and programs. All of this leads to public financial management of what we call the IFAC PFA. Good governance requires that governments make plans and set future priorities and expenditures based not on last year's problems, but instead on where public spending will be needed for the recovery, for a sustained recovery, and will have the biggest impact on society. And this must be done 
with transparency and accountability. We need to shift the focus away from just accounting for what is spent to accounting for how it is spent and reporting the outcomes achieved. And the accounting profession is here and ready to help. We must ensure that our stakeholders in government know when to call on us because as technical experts with a strong ethical foundation we can help the public authorities to direct funds more efficiently. As professionals, we will bring greater transparency and integrity to public finances. And as servants of the public interest, we will advocate for policies that create a better world through better outcomes. The fourth theme, fighting corruption. Corruption and economic related crimes such as money laundering, bribery, illicit financial flows and fraud are significant obstacles to economic growth and human development and ultimately, I must say, to the achievement of the UN's 17 Sustainable Development Goals. We estimate that every year, three trillion US dollars is lost to corruption, a cost that is far too high for society to bear. We could not afford to lose three trillion dollars before the COVID pandemic, and we can certainly not afford to lose that today. And let me say that this is more than what governments had to spend in the last global financial crisis. Our profession has a very important role to play we are uniquely placed as advisors to businesses and the public sector to help fight these crimes. Perhaps even more importantly, we are also uniquely placed to support an ecosystem of other actors and policy makers at the global, national and regional levels. Next week on September 6th, IFAC will release a comprehensive strategy for fighting corruption and related economic crimes and a comprehensive anti-corruption action plan that we have developed in partnership with the International Bar Association which identifies the pillars of an anti-corruption ecosystem as well as priority actions. So please, next week on Tuesday, go on to the IFAC site and read what we are planning to do because we will only be able to achieve that with everybody in this room with all terminal members across the country and all professional accountants across the world. And I want to emphasize the importance of trust, because as we know, it takes years to build, but can be lost in a matter of seconds. Everything we do must be focused on enhancing trust <coughs> and confidence in our profession and our organizations, including governments. Because being a professional accountant means calling on our fundamental ethical principles to fight corruption and build trust. Our ethical core is defined by the International Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants. It is the only thing that differentiates us from our any other consultant. It is what allows us to call ourselves professional accountants. And finally, the fifth theme I'd like to touch on briefly is about supporting small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs. SMEs are the backbone of the global economy and are critical to national, regional and local economies. Globally, they account for 90% of all businesses, 60-70% to 70 of all employment and 50% of in emerging markets, the role of SMEs is especially large, with 7 out of 10 new jobs in the formal economy coming from SMEs. And we shouldn't downplay the role of SMEs in developed countries either, because every company, including the world's largest, depend on SMEs as suppliers and customers at nearly every link in their supply chain. Turkey has an estimated 3.2 million active SMEs, 
representing 99.8% of all registered entities in your country. These SMEs constitute 65% of the total turnover of the enterprises, 56% of your country's exports, and 74% of employment. So strong and sustainable SMEs are therefore vital to the sustainability and success of Turkey. The accounting profession has a very important role to play in the sustainable future of SMEs. Because SMEs do not always have the necessary resources to handle the many tasks in today's complex business environment, including the new and unfamiliar work with ESG matters. SMEs will continue to look for outside support and our profession must be ready to apply our technical skills and give appropriate business advice. Small and medium-sized practices of SMEs are always the preferred advisors to SMEs and trust is the defining feature of this relationship between SMEs and SMPs. But to remain effective in supporting SMEs, SMEs and all professional accountants, as well as students and aspiring accountants, need organizations such as Termol to direct a curriculum for education and training that reflects the new and emerging demands of sustainable, of sustainable development. So I just offer a few closing thoughts. With the profound and truly global challenges that I have referred to today and so have my colleagues earlier, professional accountants might wonder, why me? I cannot save the world. Well, I'm not sure that is correct. I think we can save the world. Because there are many very good reasons to believe that professional accountants will save the world. We are at the center of information flows and decision making. So we are uniquely positioned to capture, analyze, report on and assure sustainable information. We have the skills and competencies that are critical for connecting financial and non-financial information. We have global reach like no other profession. And we have our public interest mandate. As a regulated profession, we are subject to an ethical code and public oversight that requires of us to act with professional judgment, professional skepticism, and most important of all, independence. Thank you again for inviting me to speak today. It is really an honor to be with you at this Congress and to be back in this beautiful city. It has also been a pleasure to be president, or it has been a pleasure, because my term ends in a few months' time, to be the president of IFAC at a time of so much change and opportunity. I'd like to thank Turbo again for the leadership you have provided over many decades to build a strong accounting profession in Turkey, for your support to IFAC, and for the great work in building a strong and successful economy and society in this great country. And I wish everyone a very enjoyable and rewarding Congress. Thank you. Before you take your place, Turmoc President Mr. Emre Kartaloglu will present a certificate in memory of the Congress.